a one welcome to cast discusses we have a guest that is joining again he is a reoccurring guest now third episode in i hope to have him on every two months or something like that because the last one was in february now it's april okay oh man that's crazy and then before that it was november so we're on a good yeah. we're on a linear you know what i'm saying linear motion oh oh man that's beautiful it's like a leap year kind of but it seems like every time that we have uh we got in between these discussions it's like uh bro it's like i'm more positive every other time because like Step when you first yes 100 because right. when you first interviewed it was like i was totally in a different existence a different realm what does that mean like i i was like on drugs so right now you're like trying to become more peace with yourself and Hundred percent. Avoid the. Now, would you say earlier the demonic energy, which I love when people speak like that? Yeah, demonic energy, bro. Like, like now I just smoke smoke herb because it helps my stomach. I have stomach ulcers, and then for two, it's legal in Arizona where I live. So fucking eight, for rec. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But so like, uh, I prayed to God four days ago, and I said, God, take this out of me. <clears throat> I, I, uh, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want to have an urge to drink. I don't want to be addicted to something just to feel like crap the next day, et cetera, et cetera. And I tell you what, I, I literally did a Facebook uh, live and I dumped an entire half gallon of ha uh, twisted tea in the toilet. And then I said, uh, I just want to tell everybody that I'm done with this. I don't need this in my life anymore. I dumped it in the toilet. And then uh, two hours from that, I puked my brains out. Literally everything I was eating and drinking, I was puking instantly up. I puked all that tea up because I drank a half gallon in like 30 minutes. Four days. Like it, it was it was getting pretty intense. But yeah. I let I let myself get back to a bad freaking episode of, of life. And I, I couldn't I couldn't grasp that. But when I was puking, I was grasping and understanding and then allowing the, the, the that frequency to get out of me. And so, like, the next day I went to the hospital because I couldn't eat. Uh, I ate one chip from Taco Bell because I got Taco Bell, like, uh, two nights before. It's just been sitting in the fridge, and I was like, oh, that looks good. I don't know. It was probably a bad decision, but it was one chip, bro. I ate it, and then I drank some Powerade, and I ch I puked it all up. So I went to the hospital. They they were like, your experience withdraw from alcohol, or it's called alcohol withdrawal syndrome. And so literally I was, it was instant, instantaneousness. I can't even speak the word, but if I was rapping it, I bet I could say it. <laughs> right. <laughs> instantaneous. Instantaneous. You seem to know yourself like in your dialogue when you rap, you know what I'm saying? Because you're consistently, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. hundred yeah. percent. A, 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 like that freestyle I dropped like a little bit ago on that chat. Like nah, that came yeah, out of you. That was I, I. I like the one where you were doing the one over the uh, Kendrick Lamar beat. That was so. Oh. That was probably the favorite out of because you always drop probably twenty a week or some shit. Out of out oh, of I, any any freestyle you've showed me, the uh, the one you brace yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that type. Of oh thing. yeah. Oh heck yeah. The the like come at me. I'm like coming through this like penicillin killing, and I'll be like the version of myself like a villain. Like straight getting it but understanding the cadence but still being on beat at the same time but spreading that word anyways back to the demonic frequency release i got i be, i got uh ivs they put four liters i guess of saline or in sodium whatever fluids in my body because i was super dehydrated and i was having tremors bro i was literally almost about to seizure i was almost about to seize out and they're like we're gonna give you all this medicine blah blah i passed out for like two hours because it was like really intense woke up and i felt like i was a new soul like i felt like i was baptized in the water and that water was me puking it up all that nastiness and now god has entered in a new form in a spirit form as he as i learned before and previously as a child i learned that there's the trinity the the father the spirit and uh god the father the spirit and uh the father and, and spirit uh, the, the christ of god and the holy spirit and then uh, the living spirit is what I really became more aware of because people are living today by the science. And, you know, the, I'm not trying to get all like 
preachy or nothing on this podcast or nothing. Really, <laughs> I know what you mean. Everybody thinks right, you're right. Grassy Tyson. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's not even I I'm not. And it's not the eyes of the scientist that I'm seeing. I'm seeing the eyes of the beholder, and that's that's what is the whole purpose is. And now I'm in stillness, and now I'm in calmness. And now I don't feel like I have to be a, a person under the influence in order for me to influence other people because that's what I used alcohol for. I used it for writing. <clears throat> I used it because I have social anxiety. I can't, like, go live. Like, I'm live doing this podcast, but... I smoke beforehand, you know what I'm saying? Like herb, but herb is, is what makes me where I should be all the time instead of me relying on alcohol because it's just not like a, like I was saying, it's like medicinal, but medicinal purposes for my stomach and medicinal for my socials and got anxiety. But alcohol is where I let that frequency totally abide to what I didn't need in life. And so like I went live on Facebook today, literally I even, I, I just told my testimony of Christ and God and, and told everybody because I'm in a different mind state. And, and it's that's the, the hold back that you have for your own self is the hold back that uh, God essentially warned us about those frequencies that are demonic. They don't want us to express that that value, that that uh, that helping of people. They don't want that. And so now it makes sense why I made the music I made this whole time and why I hadn't because I wasn't understanding it because I was abiding to the wrong side. I was just doing the wrong things because the energies and the influences I was thinking were, I'm just specifically talking about drugs. Like they were the wrong time. They're, they were the wrong thing to do period. Like I was thinking it was cool and okay. Right, you know? Yeah, exactly. And so I lost, that, you're, you're, you're sitting down and you're thinking like, Oh, I could be selling my songwriting abilities. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And so like I started having all these ideas and positivity came back into my life the past four days. And this is who I used to be. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's why I made the whole EP. That's why uh, DJ JT came to me because that's who I used to be. And he was trying to bring that back to me because I was trying to get clean and sober and and just expressing it to my closest friends. Yeah. And can we go to that rabbit hole, the DJ JT rabbit hole? Because as you know, I think... um. (laughs) <laughs> when that occurred, uh, I was very ignorant to Doom Shop. I didn't know anything about Doom Shop. I knew a little bit, a couple True. artists, you know. But I want to know where that uh, relationship st- uh, stems from. The DGJT and Ziploc Fresher. Because that's uh, a great fucking tape. I'll tell you that. Oh, heck yeah. Well, that, that, that has stemmed from me uh, last year around, uh, like, the whole connection with me with DJJT or the project. What was your question? Both. In order. Oh, okay, okay, in order. So, I, I, he's old connection from me promoting Schema Posse and Doom Shop because he's also a member of Schema Posse, but he's not so active as everybody else that puts out a lot of Schema Posse. He's more of a Doom Shop member and like a six set. And then, uh, what is another, uh, him and sick, uh, sick records, I think. Man, if I'm oh wrong, my God. My, sick my records is so cool, dude. I've, geez, Kevin. Holy shit! What a fucking inspiration! What Kevin's been doing? Oh yeah, the Kevin, Kevin the Creep, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. So uh, DJ JT and me, we, I just, it's just literally for me promoting other individuals in the game. Literally, that's how I know everybody. Or I'm, a, I'm not. I don't say I know everybody. I don't talk to everybody on a day to day basis. But I am friends with them on Facebook, and I comment on their posts and interact with them as a person. So that's how I say, and I, I, that that's why it's just like it, it's a. Uh, I just look at them as people because that's what we are. We're all creative minds in the same underground community that are all trying to pursue the same goal. So my essential first off of how I met everybody is by uh, reposting other people's music on SoundCloud, and then it just grew from me and being real and humble and putting positivity into the Facebook. Cause that's what I say. I used to say thoughts become thing, or I say, woke up to make this money. Thoughts become, uh, woke up to make this money. Thoughts become things as believe receive. And every time I would type it in the morning, it would put it into a heart shape on Facebook. Cause I made it do that. And then it stopped allowing me to do that, but it was allowing me to do it for like five years. That's dope, that's dope. And, and like what I see now is like, you're still, supporting the underground you're consistently posting yes like, you know doing that but you're also like 
and this is me just you know being confident what i set up is you're rolling <laughs> with the serpents bro you're rolling yeah 100 percent duality and you're rolling with the northwest yes. pole shouts out to hendy uh, uh, hendy 100 percent shouts out to uh, page Se sagan page Pagan page sagan, sagan. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i got it twisted it up uh, upside down like french pins no i'm just playing <laughs> remember i called drag what i called drew I just, I call Drew I call um Jack Hawthorne I call him Drew Beardski. Oh yeah, Beardski. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He said Beardski, and he's like, oh ski ski. He's getting on the ski talk, and I was like, oh shoot ski, because every time we talk on message, we always say ski. Like, what's up, broski? And then, <laughs> and, <laughs> oh my and god, he's he's funny as shit, bro. And then when we peace out, and when I uh, do a little handshake, uh, he's all catch you on the flip zip. Like that's his fucking slogan towards me. <laughs> and I'm flip always zip, like, that's fucking. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, speaking on Doom Shops, because you're on that, I want to bring up something that Ned Bundy told me. Because I did a whole podcast yeah. with Ned Bundy. Oh fuck yes. Yeah. Unreleased because um, and he knows about you. He gave me some very kind words about you. Um. Hell yeah. So he told me that um. Well, first off, let me explain the interview, because the interview, it has been thrown around many places. Uh, we did an interview about an hour long. Um, he happened to be on uh, shrooms the whole time, and after the interview occurred, he decided for me not to release it. But the interview, I was very proud of the interview, so I asked him, can I release it on my Patreon? Would you go to patreon.com slash myvmediainc, and you can go $3 a month, sub to that, and get exclusive content. It was originally on there. Oh man! The, the Wolfy Wolf interview is on there, but I brought it down from my YouTube because of the shitty audio from the Wolfy Wolf. We and Wolfy Wolf have been planning another interview that'll be coming out soon. But the Ned Bunny interview was a great interview, but uh, he eventually he told me to remove it from the Patreon. Um, but me and Ned Bunny are going to be setting up a new interview soon. And uh, Ned Bunny, I learn something every time I speak with him, and he's a very awesome, fucking interesting motherfucker. And Hell yeah. he's talking to me. He just talked going. He wanted he wanted into some wild topics. Uh, topics that Ziploc yeah. goes into without hesitation. Let's just say that. Heck yeah, absolutely, hundred you know I mean. percent. You know what I mean? Those <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's why I get along with him because, like, every time I'm tripping, I talk to him. Like every time I trip, he messages me, and he's always like, "Hey, what's up, bro?" And I'm like, "Bro, every time." I'm tripping. You message me, and, and then we will go into these deep conversations that are intellectual about like understanding and knowledge and everything. For sure. So for I sure. could I could only understand. I could only imagine what that interview sounds like, bro. Like that that must have been like. I'll tell you some stuff. Bro. Like like, oh, man. I don't want to go too much into it because that's his. Personal nah nah. Reason. Yeah, I mean don't don't do it because like but, uh, but I will I, say which is not really that controversial <laughs> of a saying. I do want to say something that he said. He said. If you create more than you consume, Mother Nature is going to take care of you. Uh, that was a beautiful thing to hear. You know what I mean? I want to crochet that, that on a fucking pillow. You know what I'm saying? Bro, bro. By by, by Ned Bundy, bro. That's fucking titties. <laughs> what do you think of that? What do you think of that? Uh, what I dude, said, what the Ned Bundy quote. Yeah, dude. For real. He, he would he would love that you should run that past him and tell him that because like honestly that's like philosophy but to a chill vibe i, I mean teespring they got they, teespring which is where i saw my merch on they do have pillows so i could set that up and be like and be like yo bundy i got you with a percent dog <laughs> yes <laughs> you know what I'm saying? yo no hell yeah that'd be fire as heck and then uh, then then you could like do a little uh See if it, he'll do the little logo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, no, don't do that. <laughs> I will definitely. I'm writing that down, like a uh, Ned Bundy quote. You know what I'm saying? Oh hell yeah, dude, bro, for real. No, for real. That's the homie though. For uh, but back to the J DJ JT and the e uh, no shouts out to Ned Bundy because that bro, like he's helped me uh when I was on drugs and when i was not on drugs he helped me understand it as it's not like i can't beat myself up for it I, it's a decision you know it's it's a uh, it's i don't know how to explain it bro it's like he has this way to like you understand because you enter you talk to him before yeah. so like yeah, you sure. you under his intellectual is 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 freaking top-notch dollar you know what i told but, him though what me and have planned is that if i ever have the ability to go to New Mexico, which in the coming years, of course, I will have. Yes. I um, would like to shoot a mini documentary on him to post to the Mad Snake YouTube channel. 
Um, Bro, that'd be fire. Yeah, just him discussing a bunch of like cool shit that he would know about. And he also linked me to his father's uh, art website. Um, cause his father does some cool art and shit. So. Oh heck yeah, that's awesome. I'll link you to that, by the way. Um, hey, you should throw that in the link of the description of this uh, podcast since we're like talking. I gotta go through my um bookmarks, but. So, like, uh, tell me about the EP that you did with... Is it an EP or a mixtape? It's an EP, because it's just me and him and uh, DJ V Siren's on a track. And uh, shouts out to DJ V Siren. But uh, me, him, and uh, me and him mainly, I uh, was putting a whole bunch of money into this album, Positive Mind States, and I was... Uh, I got two tracks i got four instrumentals from him for the positive mind states and then i got a four track ep and that's the positive ep but that i only got seven tracks total for the positive mind state album that's on soundcloud but i want to kind of redo all that because i was all high on drugs and it's like a lot of it was good but it's not it, it shouldn't it doesn't sound like it i heard it in my brain because i would hesitate and then i would do take after take after take after take and get super frustrated all the time but during that time is that when i recorded positivity ep so it's it's amazing to me that some of the stuff actually came out the way it did because it uh when he mixed and mastered the vocals they didn't sound as they do now today because he's the one that mixed mastered it he made all the instrumentals he also put a verse on hit and then that's how it was established. But it was me outreaching to producers that I mess I fucked with the most in the underground because I chose all the prom- all the people that I've been promoting since 2012 to be uh, the producers on the Positive Mind States EP uh, album. That was the whole purpose of it. And so uh, someone took a screenshot of that I think, and then that's what created the whole intenseness of like me and the scheme of posse logo but on spotify it still has it and i'm trying to remove it and it won't allow me to remove it until i remove the whole album and then which i have to uh subject a new artwork it's just confusing as hell so it's just as is right now but that's why it still says it on spotify on the ep itself but you know it is uh, calmness and stillness let it be all right it's all right it's good for you now Yes, for now. It's all right. Yeah, that's, that's, um, I mean, that's good to see. You know what I mean? Like, uh, ah, man, like February, it seemed like February was like, you know, when the hobbits, they, they got out of, uh, remember, remember, I don't know. It's like when the hobbits, they leave, uh, Moria, you know what I'm saying? Like they got oh, yeah, out. true. February for you, that's what it kind of felt like. It's like you got out of the mines of Moria, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yes. Like, on your situation. Oh yeah, I forgot. See, all that is a it, it's blank to me. All that that situation that happened is like it's I, I black. Yeah, the blur, hundred percent. Like I, I won't even think of that whatsoever. It's just a wall, a barrier. But I, I got through it. I'm not saying I like to throw it. It's like an emotion that's deep under my skin because it's not because I literally spoke it out to existence and knew that. It happened. It it, it it occurred. But I'm not gonna sit here and have this repressed emotion take over my life right now. So it's not gonna affect me no more. But thinking back, it just feels like it was so long ago. Like it feels like it was like two years ago, but it was really like a month, two months ago. That's so trippy, dude. What the heck? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what I could tell you about that time frame for me. Just sitting in my room, fucking doing nothing. And just doing a bunch of content. It was really oh, yeah. a time of growth for me. But now I'm fucking, I got my car and I'm just chilling. I'm doing a lot of shit. And I'm preparing for the future, you know what I'm saying? The future is is a very, it's a mountain. It's a mountain for sure. In, in my Absolutely. View. But, um, but I'm just saying hell yeah and fuck it to the future. Because there's a lot of plans I have that, um will be very uh looked back to in in a historical sense hopefully hell yeah yeah that's what i'm not really hopefully um indefinitely but um yeah dude i've been just studying man like i've been studying the uh 
and uh being humbling myself like i realized like i shouldn't be fucking focusing on some random vacations i should not be looking at footage from the andes okay because i don't have the money to go there you know, you know right what I mean? like why would i right, look at footage true. about the fucking andes if I don't, like why, how would i focus on getting money to go there i'm not saying my life's gonna be going to the andes no never i'm probably not i mean i want to go there and it would probably be cool to be there but what i'm focusing is like getting my fucking paper up so then you know what i'm saying like in general yeah like, I just no, like I know. the boomer generation fetishized the vacation and they've slaved themselves to corporations that's not really an original opinion but you get what i mean no 100 percent. it's like uh like me for me and that's what i've been doing like the past three days like what i do is i write like i say to you guys every day i write like three or four songs before 10 a.m uh mountain standard time and then uh because i wake up at 5 a.m wake up before the sun rises step outside watch the sunrise because when you look at the sun you get vitamin d and then you get the energy and it cleanses you so you you vitalize from god basically so i do that i've been doing that the past four days and praying the whole time and then when i pray i cry so then uh (laughs) But anyways, I've been watching like uh, let's see, travel videos of different countries. Like last night, I watched watched a documentary on North Korea, and this dudes like were from Australia, and they uh, became in this like kind of <clears throat> propaganda team that went <laughs> undercover as a mole to North Korea, and it was like called the mole. And then uh, the documentary was called that, but like sixty minutes of Australia was like doing a cover of it. And then uh, it was crazy, bro. It was just like crazy that because they asked this question to the North Korea people. They said, what what is it about other cultures that influences you? And they were scared to answer that because if they answer that at a uh, standpoint of freedom of speech, which they don't have, they could get basically arrested and like tortured for it. So behind camera, they had to act like like they were reading a book and then everybody had the same answer to the same question. And it was about 2018, the time of the documentary. And so everybody was backlashing at Trump because it was around the time when he like said some stuff. And so every person that they spoke to, it was like they were read, they memorized this script and it, and it was, it was crazy, but it, it influences me to like, you know, understand that there's other individuals that maybe don't have that sovereign sovereignty that america has or maybe there's not a lot of people that have freedom such as ourselves and so that influences the flow of writing i don't know why i i look into other like foreign countries like uh not necessarily going there to travel but kind of being there in a sense of my mind and understanding the indigenous people uh from what we came from like i also watched like this random ass video of uh Tibetan people building a igloo made out of skins from animals that they uh, they were nomad, nomads and they had to move every four days and rebuild and build up their home and it was like the warmest uh, igloo or it was the warmest house uh, tent in, uh, in the world and it was like so astonishing man and they like they gave their praises to the trees because the trees gave them warmth and built them a house. So it was, I don't know where I'm going with this, but the understanding of life is, is different from the spec, the introspectives of other people. So for me to grasp that reality, I feel like, you know, writing for other artists, like we were saying before, that's one thought. Another thought is like a humanitarian, like a, human aid because i don't i'm not caring about jewelry or uh, cars or flashy stuff like that i i'm literally just trying to expose a message of positivity and that's literally that was a whole period that the positivity ep is the catalyst of positivity for for me to put that into the minds and the listeners because that's all i want individuals to understand for one they can help their selves help themselves do what it is that they do, whatever they want to do in their life. And you have to understand, you have to build a relationship with God for in order to do that. It can't just be some selfish selflessness or selfishness or et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's just some like, uh, 
Man, it's like the po- the power of positivity belongs to the those of the people, and that's the most important thing. And uh, researching these things, human aid would be more of a a way for me to be a, a good artist because my message is about what not other rappers is talking about because it's uh, on a positive realm of things. But although I still talk about things that are of this nature of this world to keep myself, you know, more, more there, more uh, hip because that's hip hop, you know, hip hop. Yeah. And I'm just kidding. And you don't <laughs> but, stop. And it don't stop. <laughs> you just bang to the boogie. Oh, but that's the beatboxing. To the boogie, to the boogie beat. <laughs> to the be- beat, you know? Yeah, dude. See this right here, it not a dope. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know what I was looking at into though, in terms of old hip hop, uh, the symphony by um by fuck, fuck the you're gonna it's like cool G rap, Marley. Yeah, Marley. Cool yeah, G Marley Marl and fucking uh, cool G and then KRS One. Yeah, dude, that's so fucking good. That's that song though. Um, and bro, like in terms of the posse cut we got coming on, I'm trying to do a posse cut with like five people. There's a Jack Hawthorne re- beat we're gonna be using that um was originally on one of our beat tapes, the one that he did with Alexander Imp on the track. Hell yeah, you know what I'm talking it's about. An- yeah, it's like Xander. All right, so I want to speak on something though. This massive weight has been lifted for me. I don't manage people anymore. Heck yeah. It was a waste of time. The people I was managing were really interesting people. But um, how do I say this without sounding like a fucking asshole? I got you. Um, I know. I, it, it, it. it was just a lot of fucking hearing about people's problems and um, having a lot of expectations that I didn't necessarily care about. And being told by all these people that I manage that they're like, the, oh, they're, it's consistently being surrounded by people that think they're the creators of the universe and them consistently talking to me and saying, I'm so, I'm so unique. I'm so great. When really I'm in my head thinking you're not, you know what I mean? Right. I'm just, you're cool. But like, and it's, you know, I fuck with you and you're mute, but you're not, you're not that unique. Okay. You're, 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 yeah. you know, uh, and it's very hard to consistently force yourself into conversations with these people and also a lot of these people have had their own life situations stem up a lot of these people have been fuck fucking over other people that i managed including one that i dropped including ruby and you know who scammed someone out of some money that i disagree and i had to drop ruga and then ever since then it's been this awkward tension between me and another person and everything else it just crumbled and i was like good this was a fucking waste of time i was doing this shit beforehand Okay, I was doing right. podcasts, I was making music, I was do, well, writing songs, I was writing movies, I was doing all this shit, and I had all these inspirations prior to being a fucking, you know, man, little manager. It helped me, like, it didn't really help me that much, it just made me pay for fucking promotions when I should be paying for myself to be fucking promoted, or the serpents, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, yeah just like a big fucking, like, Jesus, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not... Big waste of time, and now I'm focusing on I'm focusing on the serpents. I'm focusing on my my podcast and focusing on my views. And I mean, my views have been going up. I got a fucking thousand subs. I've been a lot of another fucking my Semper interview had like 1.6k in views. Hey kid, hey congrats on your thousand k. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, I'm almost. Mon- I'm really close to being monetized. Very close. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, dude, and. I, I think that by the time I graduate high school, I'll be making money off YouTube. You know, I already made. Hell I already yeah. Make two almost. I've been doing a chart recently where I've been making like a couple hundreds of dollars each month, based on, on just my exclusive like, music. You know, journalist music journalist services. Like people pay me for articles, reaction videos to their music, album reviews. My merchant. Oh, that's nice. I've been making a chart based on how much money I make each month based on my sponsorships and all of that without even being monetized on YouTube. So what happens when I get monetized and stuff, it's going to be only uphill from there. And I just really been preparing myself for this. And 2021 has been a very great year for me. And I just hope that I can bring what I've been learning for myself 
into people like you and to other people in the serpents. You know what I mean? Heck yeah, but, man. That's that. That's inspiration right there, bro. Yeah, I just hope to help everybody. You know, uh, like. I want to be, and I know I hate bringing up Schema again, but I want to be like Jay Green with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's all good. Everybody, I, I want everybody. To, I want to help all these. I want to get everybody <laughs> else above me. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's my mentality. Similar to how Jay Green kind of everybody that he brought into his group kind of went above him, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a problem with that. But that's just the facts. And I fucking no, love, that's where. It, in a way, yeah, that's where it, in a leg in a legacy way, he's gonna have more music. He's gonna have more people. But like, turn, you know what I'm talking about, though. No, he he says that all the time. He's he's doesn't. That's where he likes to be. He likes to be, uh, not above everybody, but like not below, but sort of say like. In, but I don't know how to explain it. Like, but you know, like Lowell he, and he's, Davis. He's, I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah. Uh, no. It's about uh, uh it's about a it's about a uh, folk singer in the village in New York, and he was basically it's based off someone who was an assistant to a lot of folk singers, including Bob Dylan and James Taylor. And he helped all these people come up in the village in New York and stuff, but he never really went mainstream. He was just kind of that guy who was small, but really helped a lot of younger artists and was the older sort of mentor figure. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, that's, that's exactly Dre Green right there. And I love that comparison, and I might make a full video analysis comparing it. Oh, yeah, that's that's fresh. I just, yeah, I love my little analysis videos. They're just kind of really, they got to be put together well. You know what I mean? I'm about to do one on my why I think the Hobbit trilogy is very under underrated and very overlooked, and how it, it basically I'd say it's on the level of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's just pure my opinion, and based on reading both. You know what I what I actually would recommend is that if you're a no, uh, if you are a family member that has recently had a child, or um, in a state where you're a guardian. Uh, I would definitely recommend you give your child The Hobbit. It's not that bad of a book. It's everybody thinks everybody ties the book to the movie. Uh, when I read it when I was about nine years old, um, it was a very, it was a very not that violent of a book. It was very just. It was very child. It was it's a children's book. It was originally released as a fucking children's book. Even though it's yeah, yeah. the pages, oh my god, it's a children's book. When you really think right. about it, it's just an adventure story. Uh, like, like Moby Dick, that was a children's book, or Hunchback in Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah, but but since they're old, everybody associates it with um being some complex literature when when it was released. Maybe it's right. because people back then were way more literate. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. They spoke well. They didn't speak terrible. <laughs> like I could. I can come from the streets, bro. I can be like, hey, yo, what's up, bro? What up, cuz? Did you see the video of the young boy? There's a video of this young boy fan who does music reactions on YouTube, and he's like nine years old. And um, he does it, and it's uh, basically like he just uh, reacts to young boy songs, and he's like smoking cigarettes in his videos. And he's like oh, nine what? years old. And, and young boy commented, he was like, hey, yo, young brother, put down the cigarettes for me. <laughs> oh, man. That's young boy account. It was hilarious. Oh man, <laughs> bro, that's insane, dude. But like, yo, young boy, young boy fans are like the tough out the womb. You know what I mean? They're they're just out the womb. They're gangsters. You know what I'm saying? True, true. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't tap into that side of me unless I'm with my friends. Like, I don't realize that I bring this dialect out, but I, I speak different. Like, I, I don't. I don't know how I speak a ton to the to other people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do, dude, you have, like a lot of people tell me like this. It's like you got a really good rap voice. You know what I'm saying? Where it's hey, not, like, that's you awesome. Don't sound like you know you're speaking from you know Section Eight in Atlanta. You just speak like a very you speak like a Ziploc fresher that's a rapper. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like, that's the best way I can describe it. But that's awesome. <laughs> that's bro, awesome. Like, honestly, dude, like, I, I just want to recommend this to, audi to the audience is that is SoundCloud is a fucking great rabbit hole, and you should definitely go. It's a really good, interesting little account. Not really a little account, and a huge account that you can really dive into. And you can find some fucking, a lot of different stuff. I definitely say that about <laughs> your SoundCloud. 
uh, obviously you have your music on all platforms, but I feel like if you want to actually, you know, do some diving, the SoundCloud account would be the look. Because, you know, you got so many cool collabs. You got the fucking DJ V Siren. You got a Nemesis collab, which I'm putting on the greatest show, by the way. Hell yes. And I'm going to give you the status on that. Basically, when I get paid for my work, I got you with that. I'll distribute that. Hey, hey yeah, no problem. It's, it's no biggie. I understand you. I'm not rushing. I understand. I appreciate I you. I tried 100%. burning it, but the computer, I went to my grandpa's house to burn the CDs, and they didn't fucking, the computer wasn't working. And uh, so, like, I'm just going to fucking purchase it off a website like a couple copies or some shit and oh hell yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you i'm gonna mail you like half of them and i'll pass out like half of them on my own but, dude hell yeah uh or i might um i don't know what to talk about it, but i do want the collective tape to be uh have cds out for that so i might put more yo i'll totally pass them out to everybody i know in this town yeah, because this town's town a, a that, little. Though? It's Lake Havasu City. It's where the London Bridge is. Lake Havasu City, Arizona. That's dope. All right, so um, I also want to talk about what we were talking about earlier. Is Cindy Lauper? Uh, what tracks from? Oh that heck yeah! Because like? I'm trying to sample her in my music. Well, Cindy, no. Well, I don't know specific ones samples from her, but I know just of samples that are like in my head forever. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's a better rabbit hole to go down. What? Uh, some samples that you uh, have an idea of sampling one day. One day, do you think I want to fucking sample this? You know what I'm talking about. All right. So like, uh, I want to do. It's like a two sample type beat. So it's like, uh, I could beatbox it. It's the Eye of the Tiger, and then it goes into Thug Love by Bone Thugs and Tupac. So Eye of the Tiger by uh, Journey. Not Journey. The Eye of the Tiger. I don't know who. Uh, it's like. I don't know who it is. White, White Snake? No, it's not them. Fucking, it's it's the theme between uh, Rocky. The Rocky theme. So it's like, uh, hold on. It's like, uh, it's like, dun, 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 <laughs> Wasn't that in fucking Spongebob or some shit? Or I'm tripping. I have no idea. I just know Spongebob from Squarepants. From Squarepants. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> but, um, do you know no, but uh, a little placey. You heard of him? Lil Placey. Spell the spell the P. Spell it. P L A Y S I. No, I haven't he's heard. A German funk artist, and he's got like a cool label or some shit. It's like Dungeon Dice Records. Oh yeah, it's it's isn't it Play C? It's a uh, Play and then Dash C S E E. No, I don't know, but it's a uh, German and Psycho Rich was like liking their shit, and I was just kind of looked into it. Shout out to Psycho Rich. I really fuck with him. But I've been looking into that, and he, like, only has 300 followers, and he sold out, like, fucking a bunch of cassette tapes. And it's just like, what? That's what I love, these cult fan bases, you know? You you just need Hell a yeah. devoted fan base. You don't need a bunch of fucking numbers. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, not at all. Just like, people, because... What are you saying? On, a, on SoundCloud, I can see who my top fans are for the past six years, and it shows how many times they listen to each one of my tracks, how what tracks they listen who to. Is that? It's this literal. It's literally my friend in this town. His name's Damian Decol. He's literally my number one fan, and he's listened to my music at least six thousand plays. That's and great. I haven't. That's just out of him listening to it because I I don't I only kicked it with him twice. I tried to record it with him recently. We got a song we're working on, but I hadn't gotten back into recording with him on it. And so like, but him, and then the other uh, person is a uh, man. I don't know. I have to pull it up and I can show it like a screenshot, but it shows everything. Like, <clears throat> like my recent week, I got like 126 plays, which ain't shit. I know it isn't, but I'm not again, like the plays, like you said. And then uh, if you guys honestly want to go in the rabbit hole on my SoundCloud, that literally will take you to places that like, 
<laughs> I can't even explain because some of those like there's a beat on there. I don't know if you heard it yet. It's called Banishing Efforts. That beat, dude, is such the one of the craziest beats I've ever made because it takes you on like a roller coaster and then it changes completely when it goes through it. So if you look up Banishing Efforts and then there's another one. Dude, you're, uh, you're my third top list. You're my third uh, top listener. Oh, hell yeah. That's fire. Yeah, dude. And then user85. <laughs> then there's Gustavo. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky, dead internally. Soji. Northwest Colts up there. Hell yeah, see? Theology. All your homies are listening to you. That's dope. Dude, dead internally is a special one. Hell yeah. You, I don't know. You listen to them, right? No, I didn't get a chance to yet because I wanted to dedicate time. Because when I listen to new music, I literally sit down and listen with it. Because I'm always well, busy who out trying of the to... New, who out of the Serpents have you been fucking with lately? I fuck with everybody. But I I don't... I, I honestly haven't listened to music like I used to off of SoundCloud. The past four days, I just literally been drawing inspiration from certain artists or certain songs that bring uh, the spirit of Christ into me, so I could base that foundation, and then I will rebirth myself into the understanding more. So <laughs> it's crazy to talk like that, but I'm I'm like serious about the motion I'm at. But no, I, I mess with everybody dead internally. Uh, freaking is fired. I I like. Uh, Fuck, I, I'm terrible with names, so everybody freaking text having sick fucking. But honestly, recently I listened to, I have uh, all of DMX's album, so when he passed, I was literally shook by it because I, I'm literally influenced from him. But then I started really listening to his music, and I listened to all of his prayers today, all of his prayer skits, and it affected me like I can't explain. And the last video he had was a confession that he put out of of his testimony for christ so when i listened to that i watched that yesterday and it like influenced a whole bunch of energy man i just i I keep talking about it because i want to i want to just have people hear it it's it's like it reminds me of all the times it says smoke weed every day or drink this or drink that you know this and that don't care about shit blah blah blah, skip it to beep bop (laughs) Uh, I'm going off topic. That's my whole life. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, bro. I know. I know. It's fine. But um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm fucking with what you're talking about and all that. But um, let me see what else we could go into. There's a lot of shit we could talk about. But um, I feel like we covered as much as we could. I don't want to do a long episode. But bro, for real. Uh, my uh, phone's at 22%, but it's not going to hold me back because I got a battery saver on. I'm just letting you know. But, uh, yeah, I feel like we're going to wrap this up and we'll talk afterwards. But, um, heck yes. Thanks for watching. Anybody who uh, watched or listened to that, uh, check out the sponsors in the description. Buy the merchandise. You can get a nice Mike Media mug right here. You can get that. In the in links in the description and check out Ziploc Fresher's music and social media and uh, I'm gonna link Ned Bundy's father's art page in the description. Scott Randolph. Hey, hey. shouts out Ned Bundy. And um, hell yeah, and uh, good night, anybody listening or evening or morning. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>